This video is just one small part of a video where I compared anastrozole, exemestane, and letrozole. If you're interested in seeing those head-to-head -head comparisons, I'll link that at the end of the video. But before we get into this one, this is not medical advice. This should not be used to treat or diagnose medical conditions. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Let's get into this. Exemestane is a steroidal aromatase inhibitor. So remember when that aromatase enzyme acts on exemestane, it thinks it's androstenedione. dione. It tries to process it into a, an estrogen, and instead it forms a permanent covalent bond, and now that aromatase enzyme is done for. It cannot become unbound and then have this theoretical bounce back of high levels of estradiol when stopping the medication. So there is some clinical research surrounding it. I'll be honest with you, not a lot in a TRT context. I really couldn't find anything, but this one is we can have some takeaways from this study, which we'll get into now. It's titled Pharmacokinetics and Dose Findings of a Potent Aromatase Inhibitor, Aromacin, Exemestane, in Young Males. So more or less, they had eugonadal subjects, so people that had normal testosterone production between the age of 14 and 26 years old, and this is what they found. Exemestane suppressed plasma estradiol comparatively with either dose. 25 milligrams suppressed by 38%, 50 milligrams suppressed by 32%, which is a little unique. You would imagine the 50 milligrams would have a larger suppression, but this is a very, very, very small study. There was only 12 subjects. With a reciprocal increase in testosterone concentrations, 60%, 56%. So that makes sense because if you stop the aromatase enzyme, you kill that enzyme effectively. Now there's the testosterone is not being converted into estradiol. So you should see the estradiol go down, and now you have more testosterone in circulation because it's not being converted. What's interesting is we did not see that, at least the, the authors did not elucidate that in the findings from the anastrozole study, but it makes sense why you would probably see some of that with anastrozole as well. Getting back into the study, plasma lipids and IGF-1 concentrations were unaffected by treatment. The pharmacokinetic properties of the 25 milligram dose showed the highest exemestane concentration one hour after administration, indicating rapid absorption. The terminal half-life was 8.9 hours, maximal estradiol suppression of 62 plus or minus 14% was observed at 12 hours. This drug was well tolerated. So a couple takeaways from this. Number one, very short half-life in male subjects. The half-life changes with women, especially a lot of these studies on postmenopausal women with metastatic breast cancer. But in this case, it looks like these young guys metabolized the drug very quickly. And it looks like you saw comparative estradiol suppression when you compared it to the last study we looked at, which was 0.5 milligrams of anastrozole three times a week. Now. On a milligram per milligram basis, obviously, just going off of what we saw, the anastrozole does seem to be stronger, but we'll talk about the head-to-heads later. But some takeaways from this is it's a viable treatment option, but we definitely need longer term studies to assess the safety and, and efficacy of this drug. That's what some of the clinical literature say. What does the bro lore in the gym say? A lot of guys will use exemestane. We don't typically see it in a TRT context, although I could see why it could have some increased popularity in the future. But from a steroid perspective, guys will use exemestane and they'll use it, I would say when they're using heavier aromatizing compounds like high dose testosterone, um, high dose uh, D-ball, anything that's gonna turn into a, a lot of estrogen. Some guys swear by exemestane, they like it more than anastrozole. Why is that the case? I'll be honest with you. I think that it may be a smoother decrease in uh, estradiol. It doesn't seem to have as potent of an effect on a milligram per milligram basis, but I will say it's more expensive. But I guess these guys that are buying their drugs off the dark web are probably able to get this much cheaper than, I'll be honest, than I can. We use uh, pharmacies. We use 503A and 503B compounding pharmacies. But this does seem to be a vile option for suppressing estradiol, um, and I believe that Again, based off of just this one study, kind of extrapolating and bro lore from the gym, it does seem to have a potent effect on lowering serum estradiol. In a TRT context, I could see how it would work, but this is not the go-to therapy. Now that we know a little bit about exemestane, let's get into letrozole which does seem to be the most potent aromatase inhibitor we have at our disposal. 